All right, good morning, and uh, welcome to the program. You're listening to the Costa Show. I'm Henry Costa, uh, <clears throat> your humble servant, and uh, so uh, we, we've been. Uh, the show has been produced today by uh, Boaka. Boaka, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Costa. Okay, welcome to the to the. Uh, well, I shouldn't be saying welcome to you because you are the production man today. All right, so uh, I want to say welcome to every one of you. Um, and I'm Henry Pedro Costa. It's a pleasure to be here, as usual. Uh, beautiful day. Uh, how's the weather in Liberia, Walker? Well, the weather is clear. Um, very clear weather. It will be a sunny day today. Uh, okay, good. But not just today's weather. I mean, generally, has the weather improved? I mean, yeah, are we the, in the? Are we officially in a dry season? Sure. There have been a lot of sunshine these few days. So we are in a very uh, good protest weather, right? You would say that. <laughs> <laughs> There's weather. All depends on the day itself. Uh, we just pray for um, a sunny day on a particular day that we uh, uh, see a lot of people coming out to SSR their right. Thank you very much. All right, folks. Uh, good morning and welcome to you all. So, uh, we have a lot of interesting things to look at this morning. 
and uh, we're gonna begin with let's see what's here you know fellow librarians our country is going through a very difficult period and there are two groups of people in the country right now well three groups of people three one group is saying the country is extremely hard we cannot accept this the president needs to go that group I believe is a the majority then there's another group people who used to support the president um, who voted for him who are um, not happy about the way things are in the country who complain in private but in public they pretend that the hardship in the country is not Mr. Weir's fault and so they're willing to bear it oh let's just bear it let's just hang in there with the president things will somehow miraculously improve somehow if you ask them how they don't understand themselves but they somehow believe that somehow things will improve there is that group and the thing about that group is that their number is shrinking every day they're reducing in size they're losing members every day because people in that group every day they are losing their confidence or their hope and they are crossing over to the other side that is saying enough is enough let the man go then there is another group which is the third one in this group there are people who regardless of whether they voted for the president or not they agree that things are very bad but for them Let's just bear it. Four years is not too far. Let him just finish his term. Even if they completely destroy the economy and destroy the country, no problem. But let's just bear it. What can we do? Yeah. There, there is that group. So there are three groups of people in the country right now. One group, the largest group, which is saying enough is enough. He has to go. Because it's not that we hate him. It's not that we feel that he shouldn't be president. No. We feel that his being president is a curse. It's hurting us. So we want him to go. That is the group that I belong to and that is the group that most Liberians currently belong to. But the group that says, you know what? We don't like him. He's a bad guy. He's destroyed the country. We know the problems. But what can we do? Let's just live with him for the next uh, four years. Yeah, I know some members of that group. I actually had an argument with one of them last night on Facebook. She doesn't like where, never has, never will. But for her, it's okay. You know, as long as she's comfortable, she has a job and she's, you know, so fine. Let we destroy the country, you know, until 2023. Let's wait. There is that group. So fellow Liberians, that is what we find ourselves. And I'm a student of history. I have a profound sense of history. And I know this because I know that group very, very well. Because it is that group that always indulges bad leadership. They are comfortable. They are not really suffering. And so they often would say, you know, let's just bury it. It's going to, it's going to pass. It is going to pass. That group oftentimes, oftentimes, they, they, they comprise people who are a little well off than the rest of the people. Mm -hmm. People who are a little well off than the rest of the people in the country. You know, they're like, okay, you know, I mean, I, I'm still okay. I have a job and, you know, I, I'm not really worried about feeding myself or sending my kids to school. That is the group. But what they don't understand is that the utmost majority of the people who are feeling the pinch, who are suffering in the country, they don't care. 
about, oh, let's just bury it. They, they, they don't have the luxury of burying it. No, 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 no. It is not possible. Because for them, another month or another year of this government scares them. It scares them. Because they, they're looking at how their lives are right now. So it scares them. So they don't care and they're not going to wait. So yesterday, Musa Dean did exactly as expected. Now, we did not expect Musa Dean to say, you guys should go ahead and exercise the democratic right to protest. Of course not. But you see, we did not write Musa Dean to request a permit to protest. No. Just as we did on June 7th. That's exactly what we did on November 11th when we submitted our letter to Musa Dean informing him that we were going to protest and that we need state security protection for the days that we will be protesting. That is exactly what we did on June 7th. We didn't go asking Musa Dean to grant us permission to protest. The Constitution of the Republic is clear in Article 17. We have the right to assemble, to peaceably assemble, to petition our government to do something or not to do something. And to petition the government could mean anything. It could mean telling the president to step down. It could mean telling the president to deliver on certain things. It could mean telling the legislators to do something or not to do something. Also, Article 15 of the Constitution. So there is Article 17 which guarantees us the right to assemble and petition the government. Then there is Article 15, which guarantees us the right to express ourselves. Freedom of speech. Now, when you say, Mr. President, resign, is a freedom of speech matter. It is, you know, Musa Dean, I never, he never struck me as a dumb guy. And I still don't believe him to be a dumb guy. I'm not going to begin to believe that now, that he's a dumb guy. But, Musa Dean has really hurt himself badly. His reputation, his integrity, he's really damaged himself. For Musa Dean to see that for us to want to gather to say Mr. President step down is a treasonous act. It would be deemed treasonable for us to say George we have stepped down. The Musa Dean must be sick in the head. He must have either smoke something very strong or he must have had too much to drink when he wrote that letter to us. But you see, folks, I'm, I'm going to say this to you, right? First of all, the letter that we wrote Musa Dean, there is nowhere in that letter did we say we are requesting for a permit. So Musa Dean was responding to a different letter that did not come from the COP. Also in that letter, there is nowhere in which we stated that we are requesting Musa Dean's uh, per permit and that we are doing a step down campaign. We did not say in a letter that we are asking Mr. We had to step down. Now individual members of the COP, myself and many others have said we want the president to step down. But in our official communication to the Ministry of Justice which we have published, there is nowhere in that letter that we say George Weah should step down. But we are saying George Weah should step down. Individually, some members of the COP are saying it. Others aren't saying it. Ordinary librarians are saying it. Most of the people are saying it that they want the president to resign. And there is nowhere on our laws that we don't have the right to say to President we have stepped down. Musa Dean, I want to say this to you. You are sick. You need help. I'm sorry. I cannot help you. Your letter it's just ridiculous. And you cannot scare us. I mean, you know, I had an interview with the VOA last, last night. And I will play the interview for you. My response to Musa Dean's letter as chairman of the COP. First of all, let me read our letter to you. The letter we wrote to Musa Dean. The Council of Patriots, November 11, 2019. Council of Musa, Council of Frank Musa Dean. Minister of Justice, Peen Avenue, Monrovia, Republic of Liberia. Notice of plan to hold a peaceful assembly 
beginning Monday, December 30th, 2019, in Monrovia. Dear Minister of Justice, dear Mr. Minister of Justice, we present our compliments and trust that this letter meets you well. On April 24, 2019, we wrote informing you about our intent to hold a series of peaceful assemblies beginning June 7, 2019. In furtherance to that, we write to inform you that another peaceful assembly is being organized and scheduled to begin on Monday, December 30th, 2019 and would potentially last for several days in Monrovia. During this peaceful assembly, we intend to gather as many as 100,000 persons and will be gathering at the seat of government, Capitol Hill. Those participating in the assembly will begin gathering at 6 a.m. GMT and they will come from various parts of the country. We look forward to your usual cooperation in providing security for this peaceful assembly. Thank you for your support as we anticipate hearing from you. Regards, Muhammad Ali, Acting Chairman. This letter was received and signed for by a James Tia at the Ministry of Justice on November 11, 2019 at 3.52 p.m. Now, is there any way in this communication that we requested Musa Dain for permit to protest? No, we did not do that. We did not request for a permit because we know that we do not need one. And we had already staged a protest before and we know what, what is required. What is required is to inform the government so that the government may work with us to come up with a security protocol for the protest to ensure that those who attend the protest are protected and those who do not intend uh, to attend uh, are not uh, inconvenienced or are redirected into other areas where the protest will not be happening. This is the purpose for which the Ministry of Justice has to be notified. The Ministry of Justice does not have the power to determine whether you exercise a constitutional right or not. Article 17 is clear. It does not say that the government must agree for you to protest. Now, Musa Dean knows that. Musa Dean has just been a joker. That's what he's been. And we're not going to pay him any mind. And you know, as I told the VOA last night, we're not afraid of a government that cannot even pay his own civil service, and particularly the police force and the army. You, you are not even in control. You think you scare someone? You don't even have control over your own people. You do not scare us at all. So this is Musa Dean's letter. Minister of Justice, Office of the Minister, slash Attorney General. December 2, 2019. Mr. Mohamed Ali, Acting Chairman, the Council of Patriots, 15th Street and Cheeseman Avenue, Sinkhaw, Monrovia, Liberia. Dear Mr. Ali, your letter of November 11, 2019, relative to your request for security protection to hold a peaceful assembly in Monrovia beginning December 30th, 2019, is acknowledged. You see what Musa Dane says here? Your letter re requesting for what? For security protection is what? Acknowledged. You see, what he does in his letter is that he just somersaults too much. He says in one part, in the first very opening line, that our letter for re requesting security protection is, is acknowledged. That's all we requested for, security protection. Not for permit. There's no law that requires us to request for permit. Let me, let me read further. We have taken due cognizance of the several public pronouncements emanating from the hierarchy of the Council of Patriots, characterizing the assembly as the beginning of a we are step down campaign. We are further aware that in preparation to execute your plan objectives, 
You have solicited and received funding from individuals, both within and without Liberia, some of whom may not be citizens of Liberia. Now, Musa then claims that we have received money from foreigners and from people abroad. <laughs> for this June 7 protest, we have not raised any money specifically for the purpose of the protest. And we've said it very clearly. We're not raising funds for the protest. So why is Musa then coming from to say that we have solicited funds from foreigners? From foreigners? Abroad? Nonsense. Article 1 of the 1986 Constitution of Liberia provides, Musa Dini is quoting the Constitution here, All power is inherent in the people. All free governments are instituted by the authority and for their benefits. And if they have the right, and they have the right to alter and reform the same when their safety and happiness so require. In order to ensure democratic government which responds to the wishes of the governed, is this a democratic government? Folks, Musa Dein quotes this constitutional provision, Article 1. Democratic government which responds to the witches of the people. Does this joker called George Weir respond to our witches? Does he not sit there while he destroys our country and never even alters a word to us in this crisis? Has he said a word to us? Does he care that over half of the country is unhappy? And they are angry with the way he's governing the country? Does he care? Is this a democracy? For Musa Dane to be quoting this country, he should be ashamed of himself to be quoting Article 1 of our Constitution when he works for a kleptocrat and for an idiot of a president. He should be ashamed of himself. You work for George Weah. Spineless Musa Dane to be working for a George Weah. A man who cannot even make a complete, who cannot even construct a fitting sentence that makes sense. And you dare want to lecture us on Article 1 of the Constitution? Are our benefits guaranteed? Does we are not protect himself and Samuel Twain and Nathaniel Maggio? Are those not the people he protects? And you want to lecture us about Article 1 and our rights and our benefits? Where are our benefits? What are we benefiting from this government? But incompetence, disgrace internationally and locally as well. Poverty, never before experienced during peacetime in our country. The moral decaying of our of, of, of our of our of, of our governance structure. And you want to lecture us about uh, the rights and the benefits of the people and the democracy. That response to the witches of the people. What nonsense. Shame on you, Musa Dean. Shame on you. I hope you find your soul. Let me go further. You know, they want to make the argument that we are so that we are soliciting money from foreigners so they can support their ridiculous and outlandish claim that our action is treasonous. Yeah. So now once you say, oh yeah, they're raising money from John Brown. Musa Din, can you prove which foreigner gave us money? Can you prove that one foreigner gave us money? Nonsense. You call yourself a lawyer and you write such a lazy letter based on ESA and they say, can you prove that? That we have received funds from a foreigner? Spineless man. Let me, let me, let me read further. And in such manner as provided for under this constitution to cause their public servants to leave office and fill vacancies by regular elections and appointments. Emphasis hours. Look at that nonsense. You're talking about you putting emphasis on, on, on that. That the way to change the government is to wait for elections. Yeah. What do you care, Musa Dean? You're a minister of justice in a raw kleptocratic regime. You work at the will and pleasure of a dummy and idiot of a president. You have lost your integrity. And so you do not care. And so you tell us to wait until 2023, four years from now. God forbid, who knows what might happen then. And you tell us to wait. To bear patience. To die. To watch our banking sector completely collapse. To continue to experience not being able to collect remittances sent for us by our loved ones and families uh, from abroad. That is what you tell us. To get turned away from hospitals because they don't have electricity and medical supplies. To have teachers 
boycotting the classroom because they're not getting their salaries on time. Our friends, our loved ones, our family members working in government not being able to take pay. You don't care about that, Musa Dean, because you're a minister of justice. Somehow you get your pay or you have other ways to support yourself. Good for nothing, spineless man. That's what you are. Let me read further. We hasting to ensure. It might interest you to know that the Honorable Supreme Court of Liberia has interpreted the above constitutional provision expressly as it refers to the inherent power of the people to alter and reform their governments, as meaning the right of the people to decide the leadership of the nation through elections organized by those who are charged with the responsibility of conducting elections consistent with the Constitution. There is no provision for step down for we are step down campaign in the constitution and all statutory laws of Liberia. There is equally Musa D, no provision for an idiot to be president and to be flying private jet while the people are suffering. There is no provision in the constitution Musa D for the president to refuse to address the nation and tell them what is happening and what plans, if any, he has in place and what programs are underway to mitigate the economic hardship in the country. There is no provision in the constitution for the president to steal our money and to build himself mansions. There is no provision in the constitution for the president to be openly violating the laws, nominating someone as an ambassador Commissioning him and sending him off to the United States without confirmation by the Liberian Senate. There is no provision on our laws for the president to be bribing the legislators to remove a certain associate justice because he did not like his ruling given in the 2017 general and presidential elections. No provision under the Constitution for those things. There is no provision under the Constitution. For the president to put his wife in the budget and give her $1.5 million of our money. No provision, Musa Dain. Absolutely no provision. No provision under our laws, under the constitution and our statutory laws for a map-up exercise to be conducted in an unorthodox fashion where money is supposedly given to money changers that cannot be found that are ghosts. There is no provision, Musa Dain. Absolutely no provision on our laws. You want me to go further, Musa Day? I will go further. There was no, there was, there, there is no provision on our laws, be it the constitution or statutory laws, for the president to think that he is law and gospel, and whatever he says or does should be accepted. There is no provision where. The president openly stands up and threatens that as long as he's president of the country, nobody will be elected senator or representative unless he says so. There is no provision on our laws for that. What a disgrace you are, Musa D. A despicable, horrible disgrace to yourself. You bring yourself so low to work for, the, for these peaks. You work for peaks. Huh? You bring yourself in the gutter, in the mud, with these peaks. It's just where a civilized, decent human human being. Just where it's a, it's a disgusting peak. That's what he is. A man who threatens to put people in jail because they criticize him or they cuss him. There is no law in our country where you can threaten to put someone in jail because they cuss the president. You're sick people. And what you're doing by your conduct is that you are just driving a wedge further. You're dividing the country. That's what you're doing. You look at us and tell us that there is no law to call for the president to step down. There is no law for us to say the president should step down. Was there a law when they were calling for Ellen to step down for 12 years? Was there any law for that? Was there any law for seditions to protest when Ellen was president when they carried caskets on their heads and they held women's underclothes hmm? they held it high on 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 stakes and paraded around with it was there any law that supported that and they led the Ellen step down camp, camp campaign was there any law for that did the constitution provide for that 
How dare you tell us you want to lecture us on what we know our rights to be? The people of this country, they are greater than any law. The people have the right under Article 17 to assemble. The people have the right under Article 15 to express themselves. And to say that the president should step down is a freedom of speech article. It is a matter of freedom of speech to say that the president must step down. What we know is beyond saying it, taking action such as force, using brute force to effect our freedom of expression or our, our, our free speech, that would be against the law. And that is not what we are doing. We're not using brute force to, to force Joshua out of office. We're not using uh, the force of arm. We do not have guns. That's not what we're doing. We are assembling in our tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands to say the president should step down. We are assembling to say the president should step down. We're not assembling to barricade the executive mansion, to throw him out of it, to chase him down and grab him. That's not what we're doing. We did not tell you that. How dare you lecture us on something that we all know about. The laws of our land are clear and we are very well aware what our rights are, what is within our right to do, and what is not within our rights to do. We cannot, we cannot go beyond demanding his resignation by violence. We cannot do that. That's not what we intend to do. That's not what we have said. And we have demonstrated that we can organize and hold a peace of pro pro protest. We did it on June 7th. And we received the commendation from the international community for peaceably exercising our rights, uh, peace, peacefully exercising our constitutional rights on uh, June 7th. And you want to lecture us? And you're talking about foreigners are financing us? Can you prove that foreigners are financing us? Musa Dean? Can you prove that we have been financed by foreign actors? Are you that sick? Have you lost your soul completely, Musa Dean? Have you become a pig yourself? You're drinking the muddy water now, playing with the big pig, George Rian and the other pigs, Tue and McGill? Are you that spineless? What nonsense? How dare you think you can threaten us? Talking about you will hold us accountable. You, you will do what? Arrest us? Arrest thousands of people? And take us where? Are you that mad? Do you think you control this country? Where you cannot pay the police for five months and the, and the, and the soldiers? You really think that you have power, Musa Dean? Is that what you think? Have you forgotten Jenkins Scott? Are you mad? Do you even recognize yourself, Mr. Dean, when you stand and look yourself in front of the mirror? Why would you do this to yourself? Why would you stoop so low to kiss George we are behind? Just to please this boy. Have you got no respect for yourself? Musa Dean? You can't tell us uh, 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 you, 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 was, it, was, was it constitutional to remove an, an associate justice for simply expressing his opinion? How dare you want to lecture us about a Supreme Court interpretation? You want to lecture us on a, on a Supreme Court in, interpretation of the Constitution? When it comes to what? When, when, it's come, when it comes to changing the government, you think we don't know that? Did you listen to the Supreme Court? When the Supreme Court ordered you in the Isaac Jackson case, Isaac Jackson versus the government of Liberia, that the government on the 23rd of July, 2018, when George Weah appointed that boy, Moses Owen Brown, to replace Isaac Jackson at the International Maritime Organization in London, as our permanent representative, Isaac Jackson took his case to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court issued a stay order that you shall return to status quo ante. That Isaac Jackson shall be retained in his position until otherwise ordered. The Supreme Court ordered again on April 16, 2019 that you gave Isaac Jackson his passport. You renew his passport, his wife, uh, the passport for his wife and his children. Did you heed the Supreme Court's instruction? You want to quote the Supreme Court's interpretation in a twisted way because you think it benefits you? But when the Supreme Court orders you to do something, you flagrantly disobey the Supreme Court? What moral rectitude do you have to be quoting the Supreme Court in one breath and ignoring and disregarding instructions or orders from the Supreme Court? Is something wrong with you? Are you sick in the head? Frank, no, I'm sorry, spineless Musa Dean? 
You are a pig in the mud, drinking dirty water, playing with the other pigs. That's what you've reduced yourself to. You are a disgrace, a scum, a despicable, horrible man. I never believed you had it in you to stoop so low, to be crawling on your knees before these little boys that, could, that you could teach. What a terrible shame. You think that when you write that letter and now pe people will suddenly say, oh, we're not going to do the protest again. You're joking. There is no turning around. We will do December 30th. We organize ourselves in a peaceable fashion. We present a petition statement to George Weah after our June 7 protest. What did he say? Did he care to even look at our petition statement? This joker? This idiot of a president? Did he even care to look at our petition statement? He did nothing. He thinks he owns the country. He's destroying our, our country. And we should sit there and say, oh, you know, he has six years and let's allow him finish his term. We, the people, when our safety and our happiness so require, we can say to the president, step down. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that as long as we do not act in a violent manner. And we did not do that on June 7th and we do not intend to do that on December 30th. And so we're not waiting for you to tell us what to do. We're not waiting for you. You think we, you yourself, you wrote in your letter, we ask you for security protection. We did not ask you for a permission or for, your per, for a permit. The law does not require us to do that. The law does not say that. Musa Din, you think you, 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 you think you are safe from the wrath and the anger of these people who are suffering? You're defending a corrupt, kleptocratic, Good for nothing, spineless government full of pigs, and you think you're safe? You think you're safe? You have destroyed yourself completely. What nonsense! You're quoting the Supreme Court. You remove our Supreme Court justice because we didn't like him. You know what? The one thing I don't understand about these guys is that how. Is it that all these people, educated, experienced men, would sit there and allow one ignorant, empty headed, ding witted joker of a president to manipulate them? I don't understand. I don't understand how is it you allow this man to control all of you that you do not even have the courage and the integrity to look at George Weah and tell him the truth. Let me finish Musa Dane's letter. We hasten to assure you that the administration of President Weah remains committed to the protection of the rights and civil liberties of all citizens as enshrined in the Constitution. However, given the facts and circumstances herein described above, we are without legal authority to grant you permit protection and or approval to undertake an act which is indisputably in clear violation of the Constitution and statutory laws of Liberia. Ultimately, may we warn that individuals comprising the leadership of COP will be held personally, individually, and collectively culpable and liable under the law for consequences associated with their actions. Kind regards sincerely, Frank Musa Dean Jr. So Musa, then you think when you end your letter by saying you're warning us, and then that we're, we're so we're gonna, that, oh, what are, what are, what are we doing now? Are we peeing our pants? Oh, we're scared. I am very scared. Musa Dean is threatening us. Oh my God, we're not, we're not gonna come out. Oh come on, Musa Dean, it's a bluff. The police themselves won the protest. The DEA people who have not received their salaries for several months, the protest is gonna put some money in their, in their, in their pockets. The police won the protest. They can't receive their salaries. They have not been paid in many months. At least they will get something for the protest. Huh? The citizenry, the majority of the people won the protest. And so you think you can scare us? You sit on there, you have a, I don't want you. That will go for you. You all work on nonsense. Musa, 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 Dean. Who you think you can scare? You want to impress George Weah? Let me tell you something. Let me let me say something to you. 
We will protest on December 30th, whether you like it or not, whether you provide protection or not. You see, you do this stuff, you exacerbate the situation. People are going to come out whether you like it or not. And for you to threaten them, for you to threaten them, to threaten us, the leadership of the COP, the organizers of the protest, with arrest or with legal action, and you think that's going to scare us, you're wasting your time. People will come out on December 30th whether you like it or not. Even I cannot stop them. It is going to happen. The conditions in the country make it very, very ripe for people to protest. The conditions are just perfect for, for people to protest. What if, if 50,000 people come out? That, that doesn't mean only 50,000 people support the protest. Millions of people support the protest in the country because they're angry, they're hurt. They're feeling a pinch. In fact, it's worse than a pinch. And so you cannot scare these people. They will come out. Whether you like it or not, the Liberian people will assemble and they will protest. You know, I have something here I want to say to you. So what the COP is doing, folks, we did one yesterday by, I spoke to the VOA in an interview and we responded to Musa Dean's letter. And uh, the, the VOA reached out to Musa Dean to do an interview. And Musa Dean re refused to do an interview with the VOA. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I will play an interview for you. Uh, from the, uh, I, I will play for you my interview uh, for your listening. And uh, this is the interview.
That was an interview that I did with the Voice of America yesterday uh, reacting to Musa Dean's communication in which he attempts feebly to dissuade us from doing the protest, which we say, well, sorry, but you did not succeed because we are doing a protest. Uh, now, I am receiving some information. I have some numbers. You want to know these numbers. I have some numbers, the budget numbers. Don't go. It is very important you hear how the revenue is, uh, the the revenue collection is performing. Very extremely important. And I have another communication here from the World Bank regarding the forty-eight million dollar, uh, <laughs> the forty million dollar budget support. This is very important. I have this communication I just received, and it was sent to the World Bank. I mean to the government of Liberia uh, by the country manager of the World Bank. Uh, the um, hmm. oh my god, this is interesting. Oh wow, 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 this is very, very interesting. So, you want to hear this communication and you want to hear the budget numbers. The revenue is, I, I have a a snapshot of the what, what am I gonna go the flow shot of the thing, the revenue flow, how the revenue performed, revenue generation performed o over the last five months since the budget came into effect. Yes is the numbers are bad. The government has gone from July 1, and my friend Borga Jaliba helped me there. The budget year begins what? July 1, right? And ends June the 30th. Okay, that is the fiscal year. The fiscal year begins on the 1st of July and ends on the 30th of June. Now, so June, I mean July, August, September, October, November, December. They've gone how many months now? They've gone six months, right? Six months. And what I have here, I have numbers from from July to, to November, end of November. So that's what? Five months. So I have the budget numbers or the revenue numbers for five months. And I'm going to read it out to you. But before I do, let me read this communication for you. This communication was written to the Land Authority uh, the uh, to by the World Bank on October the 23rd, 2019. You want to hear this? It's very important. Dear Attorney uh, James uh, J. Adams Manoba, Acting Chairman, Liberia Land Authority. Dear Acting Chairman Manoba, uh, on account of assets ooh, for the Land Authority Project, land, uh, uh, Liberia Land Administration Project, the World Bank, in this letter, writes the acting chairman of the Liberia Land Authority about assets that cannot be accounted for. You see, this is the government that you... <laughs> this is the government that you expect will receive support from the international community when every day the international community or members of the international community, donor partners, development partners, are writing to, to inquire about missing assets or stolen funds or 
projects that are funded by them not being accounted or not being reported on and, and all that kind of stuff. You, you see how terrible this is? Let me read this letter for you. We acknowledge receipt of your letter dated October 3, 2019, and we regret the delay in responding. The World Bank wrote to the Liberia Land Authority requesting that the project assets and funds that have not been accounted for be returned to the bank by October 8, 2019. You see what the World Bank said? The World Bank provided funds to the Liberia Land Authority for a project called the Liberia Land Administration Project, LAA, I mean LLAP. For this project, the World Bank provided money and provided material resources. And the World Bank is saying the funds that were not used up, the remainder of the funds, and the assets that were that were that that, that were used during the project that are that are there must be returned to the World Bank. Listen to this, <laughs> folks. Listen to this. These people are criminals. So the World Bank writes and says, the World Bank wrote to the Liberia Land Authority requesting that the projects, that the project assets and funds that have not been accounted for be returned to the bank by October 8, 2019. We understand the Liberia Land Authority's rationale for requesting an extension of this on, on this deadline. The World Bank is asking them to return the funds that they did not use, that they, that they cannot account for. We gave you money for a project. You cannot account for the money. Give us the money back by October the 8th. What do they say to the World Bank? Oh ball, oh ball, get all day, get all more time. Give you more time? The word bank writes for them. Jesus Christ, my poor, what kind of trouble with insult? What, what kind of trouble with insult? How can we be governed by these criminals? What, what kind of trouble with insult? You steal the word bank money again? Hey, God. This is what the word bank says. Y'all go tell the one to Musa Dean with his spineless mouth sitting on that tumble we can't protest. We understand the, the Liberia Land Authority's rationale for requesting an extension on this deadline as it will ensure that the LAA can retrieve the assets and unaccountable funds from the former project coordinator of the Project Implementation Unit of the Liberia Land Administration Project. We would like to inform you that the extension is granted. So the World Bank gives them money for this project. They, they stole some of the money because the only justification for not being able to account for all of the money is that they stole it. Then they gave them assets, equipment that they use. I'm going to presume some of these maybe laptops or laptop computers and maybe vehicles or motorcycles. You know, this is a land administration project. So I, I presume these are the, 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 the kinds of uh, equipment or assets that they might be talking about here. So the World Bank gave you money and gave you material support in the form of equipment to facilitate this project called the Liberia uh, Land Administration Project. And you did not account for all of the money. The World Bank says, fine, you're asking for an extension. We are granting you an extension. We want to strongly emphasize that failure to comply with the request will require that the World Bank declare these assets as ineligible expenditures and the government of Liberia will be asked to refund. There we go again. Fellow Liberians, there we go again. The World Bank is saying if you have asked for an extension to return the balance money, you have asked for an extension to return the assets that were provided to you to facilitate the successful implementation of this Liberia Land Administration Project. If you do not live by this deadline, that this extension that you asked for, we told you to return the money and to return the assets by the 8th of October 2019. You asked us to grant you an extension so you can go and retrieve the balance money from the former project implementation director. 
We are granting your, re your, re your request. But we want to warn you strongly. We, listen to the language of the World Bank. The World Bank says, we want to strongly emphasize. No, they did not say emphasize. They said what? Strongly. The adverb strongly. The World Bank says, we want to strongly emphasize that failure to comply with the request. What request? The request to return the unaccounted for funds or money and the assets that were used. Amen. Amen, my people. Look at how this government disgraces us every given, at every given opportunity. The people provide money, you steal the money, you cannot account for the money. You cannot account for the money. And then you tell the World Bank, say, please give us time. The World Bank says, fine, we will give you extension. But then the World Bank writes, we want to strongly emphasize that failure to comply with the request will require that the World Bank declare these assets as ineligible expenditures. You know what they call ineligible expenditures? Expenditures that were not made the right way. Expenditures that were not made the right way. Expenditures that were not approved. So if you don't give us the money, we will, we will write these things off. But we will go to your government. Look what the World Bank writes for them. The, the World Bank says, and the government of Liberia will be asked to refund. Amen. The government will be asked to refund. That they will go to the national government and say, President, we are we give money to your Liberia Land Authority for a project that stole the money. We want you to re to return the money. But we'll look at the disgrace this man, the, this judge we are and his people they bring to us. Look at this disgrace. Look at this level of embarrassment. Let me read further. The financial management and overall ratings of the project will be affected. Are you listening? The financial management and the overall ratings of the project will be affected. Affected by what? Affected by your thievery, by stealing the project funds. F folks, how can these people continue to embarrass us in this manner? Let me read further. Hmm. This declaration will also impact the performance rating of the entire government of Liberia World Bank program. Are you listening? Are you listening? Did you just listen to this? I'm going to read. It is not just the performance and the ratings of this particular project that will be affected according to the World Bank. The World Bank goes on to say this declaration, the declaration that the funds were stolen, that the funds cannot be accounted for, that the assets that were provided cannot be returned to the World Bank. This declaration classifying these expenditures and the misuse and misapplication of these assets provided for the smooth implementation of this project to be deemed ineligible expenditures when the World Bank declares that as ineligible expenditures, the World Bank goes further to say this declaration will do what? will also impact the performance rating, the overall performance rating of the entire government of Liberia World Bank program. Amen. Are you listening, folks? The World Bank says, because you stole this money for this land project, Liberia Land Administration project, you have failed to return the funds. If we are forced to write off these unaccounted for funds and failure to return these assets that were made available for your use. If we are forced to classify this as ineligible expenditures, you know, the people like they have a knack for all kinds of jargons and all kinds of nuanced diplomatic phrases. If we are forced to write these things off, we will come to the government to collect, to pay back. Not only that, it is going to affect the entire relationship of the World Bank with the government of Liberia. Look, you know what I mean? Like somebody says, John Brown, that money I gave you for that project, you did not use all of the money because you cannot account for the balance of the money. And the car I gave you for the project, if you do not return that car and return that money, I will go tell your father to pay back. And if your father refuses to pay back, I assure you, my interaction with your family will be completely affected by this. The World Bank is warning you that this declaration will also impact the performance. That means if you force the World Bank, if you force the World Bank to write off these expenditures as ineligible expenditures, this 
This, this, this thing where you cannot account for funds that were left over. The World Bank says it will affect your relationship with them. Your entire collective holistic relationship with the World Bank will be affected. Do you want to risk that? Do you want to risk provoking the World Bank? The same World Bank that recently committed to providing $48 million for what? $48 million for major scale agriculture projects in the country that could have the potential to impact the economy in a very positive way, value chain development, adding value to things like rubber and maybe cassava processing, cocoa cultivation. You, you want to risk provoking the World Bank over stealing funds they gave you for a project? I mean, what is wrong with these people? As I'm speaking about the thing, my head is hurting. I'm feeling pain behind my neck. I, every day I cannot understand how these people just create mess. And they just keep embarrassing the country. They just keep embarrassing the country. What kind of nonsense is this? The World Bank says, you're not stealing their money yet. Yeah? You can't account for the money we gave you for this land project. Guess what? When you pay the money, but we'll go to job, we have to collect the money. Hey, job, we are, if we are forced to consider these expenditures or these funds, as ineligible expenditures, it will affect the way we operate with you. Because now it will affect the rating. It will affect the rating, the overall perspective of how we view your government will be affected in a negative way by this. Stay, Joey and Akia. Listen, my dear, mommy, that money I gave you, don't steal it. You steal it, it will affect the way I will operate with you in the future, my man, wait, man. Uh, you the web and you will still be there for us. You know, you're telling the person, my man, I gave you money for a project. Return the balance of the money and return the equipment that I gave you. If you don't do that, you and I would not be in a good relationship going forward. The man is prepared to risk it. Fellow Liberians, what do you make of this? Do, do you not cry? Are you not feeling hurt as I, as I am? That every day our country has to be warned for stealing money and we're being called names for stealing money? Folks, are you not bleeding in your hearts? Is this not, is, is this not why we must protest that the man steps down? Is this not why? Let me finish this letter. If you have any further questions on the procedures to comply with this request, please do not hesitate to contact the World Bank staff. Sincerely. Huima Nahara, country manager of the World Bank. And they send CC. They sent a copy of this letter to Samuel Twe, a copy of this letter to Augustus J. Flumo, Deputy Minister for Economic Management, Min Min Ministry of Finance and Development Planning, Stanley N. Toll, Executive Director, the Liberia Land Authority, Danella Den Den Gray, uh, Danella Gray uh, John Johnson, the project, uh, uh, project director, Ticon Williams, project coordinator. But let me tell you something. Now, listen. We are told that this guy, Louis J.J., is the project coordinator. And he is believed to be the nephew of Findabondo. George Weir's sweetheart, Findabondo. The project coordinator of this project, funded by the World Bank, we are told that Findabondo's nephew, his name is Louis J.J. Louis J.J., so because of Fina Bondo, eh? that empty-headed dummy girl with the pink hair and the brown hair and the purple hair, because of her, her nephew, because of her nephew, we can't collect. We are, we, we, are, we are embarrassed by the World Bank. And because of him, the whole country should be affected because of Fina Bondo's nephew. Fina Bondo's nephew, Louis J.J., they say nobody wants to arrest him. He stole the people's money, the World Bank money, and stole the people's assets. And he's passing around. Nobody wants to arrest him. We are talking about four laptops and a balance of 11,800 US dollars. He cannot account for. Four laptops. Four laptop computers. Four laptop computers and a balance of 11,800 US dollars. That the boy cannot account for. He refused to give the money. He is Finda Bono's nephew, Louis JJ. Nobody wants to test him. Because you stupid to test Louis JJ. Finda Bono is a mean chick in charge. 
you touch her nephew, you are in you are in trouble. Louis JJ, Louis JJ, Finabono's nephew is the one who stole the World Bank's money. You're talking four laptops and eleven thousand eight hundred US dollars. The boss said you're not gonna give the World Bank money. And nobody can touch him. Nobody can touch him, folks. This is too sad, man. Look, this is too sad. This is too sad. This is too sad. It is too sad. You know, I promise you the budget numbers. I want to give you the budget numbers. I have the numbers here from the system, from the LRA. My source from the LRA sent me the budget numbers. Hmm. I got the budget numbers here. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The revenue numbers. The revenue. Because you know the budget is in two, two four. You've got the revenue side. Where the money comes from. And you've got the expenditure side. And of course since Georgia came to power. You know there's been a huge imbalance. Between the revenue and expenditure. He spends too much. Then he collects. So the numbers I have here represent uh, the, these revenue numbers uh, uh, as at November 27. So the end of November, from July, July the 1st to November, that's how many months? That's five months. July, August, September, October, November, five months. So in five months, in five months, the numbers here, it shows $150 million is what the government collected in five months. Now, what percentage is that? $150 million in five months, as at November 27. $150 million. Yep. Year to date. And what percentage is that? 29%. They have generated, according to their own spreadsheet here, 29% of the budget has been raised in five months. So, in five months, the government has raised 29% of the budget. 29%. 29%, which is what? $150 million. From July 1 to November 27, the end of November, $150 million in five months. Now, how much more do they need to raise? They need to raise a balance of what? 71%. And how many more months do they have to raise that? Seven months. Do you think they can raise 71% of the budget in seven months? 71% of the budget, do you think they can raise that in seven months? I said the number yet. $150,967,000 is what the government has collected. The balance to be collected is $368,224,000. Oh, I got, I got all the numbers here, man. The balance to be collected is 71% or $368,324,000 is what they have to collect. I can give you the entire breakdown where all these funds came from, all these collections, where they came from. Tax revenue, government withholding, road maintenance fund, everything. I got all the sources here. The maritime funds, everything is written right here. So the government has collected in five months $150 million or only 29% of the budget. You have, you've gone five months. You've collected only 29%. In five months so even if you go another five months at the same rate and you collect another 29 percent that's what 29 plus 29 what is that 29 plus 29 that's 58 percent right that will be 58 percent so are you able to collect 71 a balance an outstanding of 71 percent can you collect an outstanding of 71 percent Jesus Christ. Fellow Liberians, as at November 27, 
The WIA government has raised only $150 million, representing 29% of the approved national budget fiscal year 2019-2020. They have to raise an outstanding, a remainder of $368,324,000, or 71%, in the space of what? Seven months. That means let's divide $368,324,000 by seven months and see what the government needs to collect every month in order to meet the revenue target. $364,324 divided by seven. That means we has to collect $52 million a month. Basically, he has to collect about $52 million every month in order to reach the budget, the revenue quota, or their budget uh, forecast. They have to raise at least $52 million a month, which is not happening. Can he raise 71% of the budget in seven months? You raise 29% in how many months? 29% of the budget in five months. Can you raise the balance 71% in seven months? That is a question, folks. Let's go to the phone lines and take some calls. George, I mean, Boakai. Yeah, Costa. Let's go to the lines. Let's let's take some calls there. The U.S. number is active. We're discussing very critical issues here. The country is in a big, big, big crisis. Uh, the budget numbers are very, very, the revenue numbers are very, very bad. They're very worried, 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 worried. Some. The government is not raising the money. They have raised only 29% of the budget in, in five months. And they have seven more months to go, and they have an outstanding of three hundred sixty-eight million three hundred twenty-four thousand dollars a raise in seven months. If you spread it over the period of seven months evenly, that means they're going to have to generate fifty-two million dollars a month, which is impossible. Which means the government will collapse because the government will not raise enough money to support itself. It is over. It is over. Let's take let's take some calls there, Boakai. Uh, the phone lines are open, coming up on 0770102102, that's 0770102102, uh, 0860103833. Let's take our first caller here. Good morning. Look, Boga, take another caller, man. That caller is not, is not ready. So keep your calls coming on 0770102102086010383. And uh, George Fum is also here. We'll be taking calls from it. Also, let's go back to the phone line and uh, take this person quickly. Good morning. Hello? Yeah, good morning. Hello? Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, my dear brother? I'm okay. Where are you calling from? I'm, I'm Abdullah Yeke Koluwa Kamara. I call from my NKK resident, Ruth Sass. I just want to say to the veteran, the letter from Jogia PRO, Private Security, Musa Ding, we will not honor that letter. Two of today is a must, and we'll never be uncompromised. We'll never allow anything to step out in the grand interest. Th thank you, my brother. You. Let's take more calls there, Boga. Zero seven seven zero one zero two one zero two zero eight eight six zero one zero three eight three are the phone lines that you can call. You'll be live on the Costa Show uh, this morning. Zero seven seven zero one zero two one zero two zero eight eight six zero one zero three eight three. Uh, so we stay anticipating your calls. You have raised um, one hundred and fifty million dollars in five months. That's twenty nine percent of the budget. You have to raise seventy one percent in seven months. Good morning. Lower the volume of your receiver. Okay, that person left now already. Baga, why is the voice flood to flood to waiting? Are, are you not paying attention to the to the mic? Are you not speaking into the mic? I'm speaking directly into the mic, Costa. Baga, your your voice is 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 going in and out. Let me take this call here. Good morning. When you call us, you lower the device or I will cut you off. Yeah, hello? Lower your device. All right. Let me, let me, just, let me just turn it off. 
You get him in here? Uh, hearing you was was not the problem. Just lower the device, please. Welcome. Yeah, um, it's already so. Um, yeah, this is so special. This is a Costa show. Welcome. Yeah, um, my name is Abu Mshir. I'm calling for a uh, uh, confession. Uh, first, uh, look, uh, let me tell you uh, one thing. First of all, uh, before I go into the topic this morning, I want to, uh, you know, uh, tell you a big thanks uh, for for always provide providing we the Latin people uh, this type of information. The government is I don't know how to really classify this government. The government has food the Labrador people and it's continuing to food the Labrador people. This type of government, we have never seen this type of government before. And mind you, we told the Labrador people not to put this uh, man, uh, George Mia, and they went ahead and put this man. First up, there is nothing, there is nothing that happened when this man leaves in power. So December 30th, I urge every Labrador living in Liberia, in Liberia itself. Please, you that live in Liberia, please call whoever you can call to encourage them to step out and go and protest. We need to take this man out. This man needs to go. This is very disgraceful to us. How can a man empower or give somebody a job and this person to run this money that we just spoke about in the war bank and there's nothing happening. From all the way to go up to first, they may need to go, but of course, they may need to go. All right, my brother, thank you. Let's take some more calls, Abuaka. Okay, so the phone lines are open. We stay uh, awaiting your calls on 0770 102 102. That's 0770 102 102 0886 0103 Or you can call us on 0886 um, 01083 on George number that's 077-340-7. Good morning. 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 How can you go, you know, discussing how the council of Petra has to raise your money? Is that your concern? Or has anybody complained or filed any complaint to you against the council of Petra? Is, is it a concern as to whether they share their money for, or for international supporters or whatsoever? Is that your concern? Your concern is to address the letter which demand or ask you to provide to the to them. The concern is not to go further discussing how they got their money. That's not a concern. And so when you say the protest is an act of truth, I want to say Mutadi was actually out of his mind. But he was on a call point to write that letter. Because nobody mentioned in that letter that <clears throat> the council of Petro want to overthrow the government or they want to support anybody to bring war in this country. So why say the, 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 the protest is number one or, 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 or betraying or overthrowing the government? <clears throat> is it? You see, this, it was actually misplaced. It was misguided. That letter was misguided. And I want to say I'm very much disappointed in Mutadi. And so when you say the, the, the protest is unconstitutional, I want to say Mutadi has read the constitution, but he should go and reread the constitution and understand the constitution, know the proper interpretation of our constitution. Because it is so only that it is one of our constitution that has a short manner. He says he has the right to act in a public service this office. A two appointment or election to pay the second that uh, people are made or are left by the official that left. So how do you say the the, 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 the protest is unconstitutional? And again, as you go down with this, he said, at all, at, 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 in a short, peaceful manner, the president has the right to people that assemble a petition that leader in a government business. As you go to this, they freedom of speech. So how do you say it's unconstitutional? I'm very much disappointed in Musa Day. Giving that letter to the to the, to the, to the, to the All right. 
Thanks so much. Thanks so much for your calls. Let's go back to the phone line. Take some other phone. Uh, line two this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Your name you calling from? Is it a contact show? Yeah, you are live. Your name you calling from? Yeah, I'm Timothy Smith calling from 77. Welcome. You know, Costa, you yeah, thank you so much. And that little argument that uh, Musa did say, right? You know, you have more courage. If you have more courage, you will take us. You will never fear. Because the first thing they come in is a death threat. Don't worry about them people. Can you imagine people carrying the children to the hospital, no money, go to the bank, and say, can you do that thing? And you can deposit 20,000, 30,000, for even if they accept you in the country. The hospital is not deposited 10,000, 15,000. They can't even receive, okay? They can't even receive you as your picture with God, right? People in the car. It's happening every day. So where are we going? They don't have interest in the country. They don't even wish themselves to build up the 20,000, 300,000 who's around here. And if nobody gets interest in us, no more. So we can the president, the best thing you can do and leave. Because we need accountability, we need justice. Human culture is not a problem in this country. Too long, we didn't have to say for the same. But we need justice and accountability. You see the war not coming up. So this government is a death that we don't have to We need to stand up and, and, and tell the world that enough is enough. We have nobody to live on. Everyone has to live on. We know we went through 14 years of war. We're not bringing war. Human culture is not bringing war in the country. We're not supporting no war. But we need to stand up for justice and accountability. Not real for every one of us. Okay. So, President, what you want to say? Just a minute, you want to say? When we were editing history, two hundred years of government uh, 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 in power, you protecting the people, you corrupt government officials, you protecting war law. Who is protecting the Nigerian people? We are saying bear with the people, bear with the people. Who is bear with us? Who bear with President? We are. Thank you so much. We are waiting for you, Eric Costa. We will turn on the no. In some months, in some two months, it was a very great day. President, we should wash up. We should wash up, and we want the international community and the families to understand that we will not stop. Because we need justice and accountability. No right of people, not only women, no need protection, no youth empowerment. I've been using hard men to kill our young people, our children, kids who are coming. You know what I mean? We lost a ranger, we found a body on the street. Can you imagine? We, just, we, we will not have a uh, government that will come and bring mayhem on us. This country will get you and get you a lot. Okay, my brother. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bwagai? Bwagai? <laughs> Uh, I'm having some issues there, but hold on, folks. I got so the World Bank finally went ahead and wrote the Ministry of Finance requesting the refund of the money. The letter is there, yeah, yeah, yeah. The World Bank wrote and they wrote Samuel Twain asking for this money the 11,800 US dollars. Yeah, wow. And even though the guy ate the money, but nobody touched the guy, nobody bothered the guy. 11,000, and they asked them to refund the money before November 30th, 2019. I'm not sure they refunded the money. Folks, you got to hold on there. I have the letter here from the World Bank asking the Ministry of Finance to refund 11,800 US dollars. 11,800 US dollars by November 30th, 2019. Now, I do not know whether that refund was made, but I would not be surprised if it were not made. I would not be surprised. Knowing these people, I'm pretty sure they took it for granted. They most likely did not refund the World Bank's money. $11,800 eaten by Finda Bono's nephew, Louis JJ. Ate the World Bank's money. $11,800. Jesus Christ. This is serious. Serious stuff. Good morning. Uh, Sanford Robbers there from California. I'm sorry, I lost connection with Roots uh, in Liberia. Let me see what I can reconnect with them. Uh, you know how it is, right? If we have a problem, they don't call me to say anything. I have to call them. Yeah, they will never call me. To say, oh, boss man, this is what happened. They will not do that one there. Let me call them, folks. Yeah, my man, what is the problem? What is the problem? Did you tell your people that when something happens, and I, and, I, and I tell you, they think, oh, oh when something happened, they should call me right away to tell me. But 
call them. I mean, you should go tell them that this is this will be to be standard product, product, protocol. Talk it. You gotta tell like very many things over and over. Something happens, call me right away. Right away. That one there, that nothing. They will not do it. Talk it, man. I will, I will be saying now here the poor. Now if you call me, when I told to say cause a little bit blasting at his work. That's the only way you can you gotta treat librarian man. Cause you you they they they're they working for you. The island there, you're cheering it. When they do something, you gotta be blasting them. Why should you be blasting them? Groom men. Yeah. We lost connection. Just pick up the phone and call me. And explain to me so I can be able to tell those of you who are watching the Facebook Live. 1, 000, almost 1,400 of you. Folks, I'm very sorry. We lost connection with Roots FM. I'm trying to reconnect with them. Hold on, please. Ah, uh, folks, I'm very sorry. We lost connection, and uh, okay. Sorry, I'm sorry, but we're gonna have to end the show. Yeah, we're going to have to end the show. I'm very sorry. I apologize for that. We, we, we did enough today. This is just about the time when we were supposed to close anyway. So, you know, we'll be back here tomorrow. We got other interesting issues to discuss with you. And somebody just promised me a bombshell. So we might be dropping that once we have it tomorrow. And uh, have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. We did enough, right? Did, did we not? <laughs>